All right, well, let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your abundant mercies and for all that you have done. And as we have the opportunity to consider this topic of the Bible and what it tells us about immune function, uh, we ask for your, uh, your word to be powerful, to be brought to us by your Holy Spirit, and for you to bring about your will and way and help us to understand the things that you must, you would desire us to understand, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, I have uh, looked at this topic. I know the, the actual topic was listed as uh, neuroimmunology and the Ten Commandments. We're going to be covering uh, it's essentially the same thing, but a different title. Uh, we want to look at how we function and why we function the way that we do. And one thing that we have not done well as healthcare providers is to understand the power of the word of God as it relates to health and healthcare and as it reveals to us the truth. And so we are going to take a journey today looking at immune function from the standpoint of the Bible and what does the Bible have to teach us. Now, I do want to say councils on the church says that the Bible must be regarded as the highest, the most important textbook. And of course, a textbook is what you use to, to learn and understand a, uh, a, a subject. And many of us have uh, have had textbooks for the various different classes, the Bible should be regarded as the highest and the most important textbook. We are told that students should be rooted and grounded in divine truth. Their attention should be called not to the assertions of men, but to the word of God. Above all other books, the word of God must be our study, the great textbook, the basis of all education. So first of all, what does the Bible teach us about disease? Because we must learn from the Bible. It is our instruction from the Lord. Well, we are told from the Bible, Exodus 15, 26, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt do that which is right in his sight and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. So here we see that healing comes from the Lord, and it comes on condition. And the condition is that we diligently listen to the voice of God, and we do what is right in his sight. We keep his commandments and his statutes. So when we do what God would have us to do, he then gives health. So the cause for health is a spiritual cause. It's understanding God's will and doing his will. Now, the opposite is true. That is, it, he, if we don't know and do God's will, then disease is one of the responses to that. Now, we read uh, further in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verses 12 through 15. It says, wherefore, it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them. Right. Here's the condition. You listen to God's judgments and you keep them and you do them. That the Lord your God shall keep you unto thee a covenant and mercy which he swore unto your, unto your fathers. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land. You shall be blessed above all people. And there shall not be a male or female barren or childless among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So here 
is right here is the the instruction that the Lord has given to us in his word about where sickness comes from. Again, we would have none of the sickness if there was the obedience. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 23, says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So here we have that God is showing us that if we, if we pay attention to his words, if we listen to his sayings, and we keep them, if we keep God's word, it brings life. It brings health. And Matthew 13, 15 tells us, for the heart of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. So each of these passages is giving us the understanding that disease is the effect of going outside of God's will and health is the response of staying inside of God's will. And this association, many of us see individuals who are smoking, drinking alcohol, eating a poor diet, and they have a bad lifestyle. They're arguing with their spouse. They're beating up their children and so on. Well, things don't go well when you're not behaving well. But when an individual is in love with God and following him and obeying his word and taking care of the temple, the body that God has created for us, when that is the case, then things go well, go better, right? And it's not just how one behaves, but it's how one thinks. We're told in Ministry of Healing, page 421, uh, 241, sorry, that the relation that exists between the mind and the body is very intimate, meaning very close. When one is affected, the other sympathizes. The condition of the mind affects the health to a far greater degree than many realize. Many of the diseases from which men suffer are the result of mental depression. And uh, it, just like uh, Dr. Viriato, I take care of many patients that have depression. And there's negative health consequences to having the depression. We're told disease is sometimes produced and is often greatly aggravated by the imagination. Many die from, the, from disease, the cause of which is wholly imaginary. Oh, I don't know if you've seen this in your practice or not. I have. Where somebody imagines that they cannot recover. They believe that they are sick and they cannot do things. And so therefore they don't try to do things. They don't try to get better because they don't believe they can get better. And they end up dying with their condition. The cause of which is wholly imaginary. We're told also that a contented mind, a cheerful spirit is health to the body and strength to the soul. A merry or rejoicing heart doeth good like a medicine. This is wonderful news that we have because it means that we can pursue health through the way God has intended for it. We are told in Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, page 443, sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Nine-tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have their foundation here. Where? Here, in the mind. Why is it that, that and how is it that this is the case? 
Well, everything in the body is regulated through the mind. Your heart rate, your blood pressure, your, the volume of fluid in your blood vessels, the, uh, the, the rate at which you excrete urine from the kidneys, uh, every organ system and every organ and its function is ultimately controlled through the mind. There's feedback mechanisms through the nervous system that leads to the control of everything that happens in the body. And when the controller is not doing well, you're going to see manifestations of that coming up in the Bible. Now, maybe we understand that, you know, and we have understood from the Bible that disease, uh, it does relate to how we listen to God or how we don't listen to God. But have we considered about infections? What about infections? Many of us believe that infections are simply the result of, of a random occurrence of uh, certain microorganisms taking over the mechanisms of an individual and causing infection. But is that what we see in the Bible or is it not what we see in the Bible? Well, let's look. Let's look at some examples. Let's learn from the word of God. Numbers chapter 12 uh, gives, us, uh, gives us the insight into a, what we consider to be an infectious disease, leprosy, right? Leprosy is associated with mycobacterium leprae and uh, is a result of an infection from that bacteria and it damaging the nerve endings and damaging uh, tissues and leading to the loss of fingers, the loss of nose, the loss of toes, and so on. Well, here is a case. Uh, this is the first case of uh, leprosy in the Bible, of somebody having leprosy as a whole. Now, the, the first episode was Moses putting his hand in his jacket in obedience to God and pulling his hand out, and his hand had leprosy. And then God told him to put his hand back in, and then bring it back out and it was clean. So here is the, an individual that's fully with leprosy and it's the case where Miriam and Aaron have spoken against Moses. We're told and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses and they said this, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? So they wanted a piece of the responsibility they wanted uh, that, and, and the Lord was not happy. The Lord heard it, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Now, we, it, leprosy, again, we understand is an infectious disease, but where does this infectious disease first show up in the Bible? It's, it's because of God. It's because of God's either proving his power with Moses or showing his displeasure to Miriam. All right. Now, this is not the only case. Let's, let's look at some other cases. This comes from Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 is the great chapter that shows us the blessings of obedience and the curses of disobedience. And so we're going to look at some of the curses of disobedience. Deuteronomy 28 shows us that if you will hearken unto or listen to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, right? So if you will not listen to God's voice, if you will not do his commandments, these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto you, right? So pestilence, like a plague, an infectious disease, like a pandemic, until he has consumed you from off of the land. The Lord will smite you with consumption, that is tuberculosis, that's consumption, and with a fever, right? We know fever is involved in infectious diseases too, and with an extreme burning, and with a sword, and with blasting, and with mildew. So we're looking at like rashes, and inflammatory conditions. The Lord will smite you with a botch of Egypt. 
and with amarods. Amarods is hemorrhoids. Uh, botch is, uh, is an itching, scratching disease. With uh, uh, ulcers, it's ulcers actually. And with the scab and with the itch. So now we have itching diseases that are there. Uh, wherefore thou, thou canst not be healed. All right. So the Lord is going to allow these things to come and you're, kind of, you're going to try to fix it, but you can't fix it. You can't heal yourself from it. The Lord will smite you in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed, ulcers that are there, and uh, maybe pain in the knees and the legs, like an arthritis, from the sole of your foot to the top of your head, like Job. Then the Lord will make your plagues wonderful, and the plagues of your seed, and every great plague, and long continuance. So he's going to allow plagues to come that will can continue a long time and sore sickness and of long continuance, things that are gonna come and stay around for a long time. Moreover, he will bring upon you the diseases of Egypt. Well, what kind of diseases did Egypt have? Well, Egypt had heart disease, Egypt had diabetes, Egypt had arthritis, Egypt had cancer, Egypt had these different things that we all struggle with nowadays. And those things you were afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you or stick to you. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. What was the condition of this? The condition was disobedience. What was the result of the disobedience or not doing God's law? All sorts of infectious diseases, plagues, pandemics, inflammatory conditions all a result of disobedience to God. Leviticus 26 and verse 21 says, If ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. So if you walk away from God, and he allows the smaller consequences to come in order if from his love in order to wake us up, to show us the, the, the horrible situation that we're in and our great need for God and his love. If we're not waking up by that, God's going to have to bring harder things to come in an attempt to try to wake us up and to help us to change because he loves us. It's not for punishment. It's because he's trying to redeem us back from the fall. Numbers 11.33 says, while the flesh was yet between their teeth, the, the Israelites were complaining about God. They were complaining about the manna. They wanted to have meat because they were missing the meat from Egypt. And, and so they, uh, they were consuming, they, they, God provided meat for them and they were eating the flesh of that meat. And while it was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Plagues, typically, we consider to be infectious events, some kind of infectious particle or infectious agent that then leads to infection and death. But this, of course, is coming from the Lord. 2 Samuel 24, 15. So the Lord sent a pestilence. What's a pestilence? Well, pestilence as, as well is an infectious disease, like a plague. So upon Israel from the morning, even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. So 70,000 people died of this pestilence in three days. But where did it come from? It came from God. He was the source of it. Psalm 78 and verse 50 said, He made a way in his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. This was in regards to Egypt and their disobedience, the Pharaoh's disobedience against God and his pride. And so here he is. He is allowing this to come about in order to try to rescue people. You see, God did not bring the plagues on Egypt in order to destroy Egypt. If he wanted to destroy Egypt, he could have just sent an angel right away and kill him. 
And then Israel's free. Israel's free to leave. There's nobody to stop them. But no, why is it that God came with plague after plague after plague after plague? Why did it start small and then get worse and worse and worse and worse over time? God did that because he was trying to rescue as many people as possible from that. He was trying to rescue as many Egyptians and as many Israelites as possible from their sin and from their rebellion. It's by God's love that he allows these things to come so that he can rescue us back. But what does the Bible show is the cause for disease? Well, clearly it's sin. What does the Bible show is the cause for infectious diseases? Clearly it also is sin. And the Bible is clearly showing us that. Now, this is not something that we learn in our medical school classes. This is not what we learn in our immunology classes. We learn the effects of this. We learn the physical things. We learn about the, the, leuco the lymphocytes, and we learn about the granulocytes, and we learn about the macrophages and the monocytes, and we learn about all of these different things, and we learn about antibodies, and we learn about antigen-presenting cells, and we learn about lymphocytes, you know, the lymphatic tissue and the spleen and, and so on. And all of those are good. All of those are part of one's response system to, uh, to trauma and to other adverse substances that are out there. Well, that's great. God has created us with that system. But the question is, where does it begin? Where does the function of the immune system begin? <clears throat> Well, what does the Bible have to say about autoimmune disease? Because that's another major component of proper immune function or improper function or, um, or uh, dysfunction, immune dysfunction is autoimmune disease. That's one of the things that we see. So the immune system has its origin in the bone, in the bone marrow. You see, it is from the bone and the bone marrow that you have your stem cells that eventually turn into your various different cellular components, whether it be lymphocytes, natural killer cells, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, uh, monocytes and macrophages, all of the different types of white blood cells that are an integral part of your immune system, they begin in your bone. They begin in your bone marrow. And your bones do not just operate by themselves. They are under control, control of the nervous system, because you have a very extensive network of nerves, of neurons that come and supply the bone. If you don't know that, when you break your arm or you break a bone somewhere else in your body, you know you have significant amount of pain. Why? Because you have damaged the nerves that are in the bone. Well, the nerves are not there just to give you pain when you break your bones. The nerves are there to control the function of everything that happens in the bone and the bone marrow. So the production of white blood cells is under the direction of the mind through the nerves that then supply the various different bones where the blood cells are produced. How is it that you increase or you decrease the function of uh, the production of red blood cells or white blood cells in response to things going on in the system? There has to be something that regulates that. There has to be something that organizes that, and it is organized by the mind to the bones. So when we look into the Bible to understand what it says about immune disease, immune system function, and especially in relation to autoimmune conditions, then we need to look at what the body says about bones and bone health, because that is where the immune system begins. So let's begin to look. Here is Psalms chapter six, Psalm chapter six and verses one through seven. It says, O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, 
for my bones are vexed, meaning my bones are, are anxious or shaking or irritated. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave, who shall give thee thanks? I am weary and my gro with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Mine eyes have, uh, is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all mine enemies. So here you have a situation where an individual, their bones are not doing well. If your bones are vexed, that means that it's not doing well. So your immune system is not doing well. Why? Because your soul is not doing well. Because of groaning, so complaining, right? Um, because of tears, because of grief. So somebody here in this situation, they have enemies. What their enemies are doing and saying, they are taking personally. They are crying because what others have said and done. They have grief because they have lost things that they didn't want to lose. And they are groaning, they're crying, they're complaining. Well, that will cause your bones to be vexed. That will cause your immune system to be less, less functional or more dysfunctional. So that will cause dysfunction in your immune system. See, the Bible is trying to teach us. If we understand how to read and to understand the Bible and what it's saying, we can realize that it is a masterpiece of physiology, of human physiology, and it's teaching us how we function. Have mercy upon, this is uh, Psalm 31 and verses 9 through 13. It says, have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eye has consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my, and my belly, for my life is spent with grief. All right, so here we have somebody that's in trouble. They're, they're grieving, and you grieve what you have lost. And my years with sighing. So they're, they're feeling sorry for themselves for what has happened. My strength fails because of mine iniquity. So there's sin. They know that they have committed sin and my bones are consumed. So why is it that their bones are consumed? Why is it their, their immune system is bad? Well, because they see themselves in trouble. They have grief. They are complaining and sighing. They have sin that is not taken care of. I was a reproach among all my enemies. So they think that others do not like them but especially among my neighbors, so even those that are closest to me, and a fear among my acquaintances that they hid, that they did see me without, without fled from me, so that my friends forsake me. I am forgotten. How do you feel when you're forgotten? All alone, right? I, as a dead man out of, my, out of mine, I am like a broken vessel, for I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me. So you are personally hurt by what others say. There, you have taken personally what they say about you. you. You feel like you are forgotten and forsaken. You have grief. You have lost things. You sigh. You're reproach. You have sin. All of these things are things that produce autoimmune disease. These are the foundation of autoimmune disease, of immune dysfunction. And it is revealed to us in the word of God. Psalm 38, 3 and 4. There is no rest in my bones, right? No soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. For mine iniquities are gone over my head as a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. So to be burdened with sin, to be burdened with your iniquities, to have guilt, that is a cause for immune dysfunction and autoimmune diseases. So how often when you have a patient that has autoimmune disease or some kind of immune deficiency, how often do you go looking to see if they have guilt? 
go looking to see if they are taking things personally, what others say or do. F do uh, how many of them are feel that they are alone because they are Se forgotten? Things we need to be checking for because these are the causes for immune dysfunction. Uh, here is Psalm 103, 3 through 10. For my days are consumed like smoke and my bones are burned. Is it a good thing for your bones to be burned? No. My heart is smitten. So there's heart trouble. Not just talking about cardiovascular disease, but the part of your mind, the heart. And withered like the grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. Do you know people that don't that forget to eat? Yeah, it's people that have depression. So here you have somebody who's depressed. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. Mein Gebein an meinem Fleisch. This individual that, are, that is taking things personally, that's going to affect the immune system and its function. You will not have a properly functioning immune system when you take things personal, when you hold things in, when you have depression. I am like a pelican in the wilderness, like an owl in the desert. I watch and uh, as and and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. So see the the person feels abandoned. They feel alone. That doesn't make your immune system function well either. My enemies reproached me. So you're taking things personally all the day and they that are mad against me are sworn against me for I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine indignation and thy wrath if thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. You ever had anybody that, that when they're feeling good, you feel good. And then when they feel bad, you feel bad. Yeah, they lift you up and they cast you down. So somebody who's in that experience and taking things personally seeing others as their source and responding to them, then the immune system can't function properly. It just can't do it. Uh, Psalm 109, 16 through 18, because that he remembered not to show mercy. All right, so here you have somebody who is not merciful, but persecuted the poor and the needy man. All right, so somebody who persecutes. He might even slay the broken in heart. So you might not just kill somebody, but if somebody's broken hearted and you speak to them uh, in, a, in a negative way, uh, thank you for the correction. It was Psalm 102, not Psalm 103, the last passage. You're right. Um, if, you, if you speak to them in a way to break their heart even more, that's like slaying them. And as he loved cursing, so let it come on unto him, the cursing. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. So somebody who is not good to others doesn't show them mercy. He persecutes them. He, he hurts them and he curses others. That's going to enter his bones. That will have an effect on immune system and immune function. So you have immune dysfunction that comes because of that. Proverbs 14, 12, 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness to his bones. So you're married to somebody, and that somebody that you're married to um, is, uh, is not... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what should I say? She, she, the, your spouse is not behaving well. Now, there's a number of things that a spouse can do to, that is shameful. One of those is going and sleeping around with others. Uh, another is being a gossip uh, and uh, doing things that are not right. Well, if you are taking that personally and uh, you, you, you see your spouse's problems as your own problems, and you become ashamed because of their actions and their activities, well, that you're going to take personally, and that's going to have an effect on your bones. It's going to have an effect on your immune system. We're also told a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy, 
the rottenness of the bones. So if you envy others, if you want to be what they are, if you want to have what they have, if you're constantly striving after what somebody else has and, and so on so that you can be like them or you can have the same things that they have or you don't like them and you want to push them out of the way so that you can take their place, that will have an impact upon your immune system as well. And finally, Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit trieth the bones. A broken spirit. Somebody who is depressed, somebody who is bitter, somebody who is not in harmony with God and God's law, it's going to have an impact upon the immune, fun, immune system. So the Bible is showing us from a diagnostic standpoint why somebody ends up with poor immune function. Poor immune function rarely, now it can, but it rarely begins as a physical thing. Now it manifests physically, but it rarely begins physically. In immune dysfunction begins spiritually. And it is, it is, uh, taken from the mind to the body through the nervous system and its impact upon immune system and immune function. And not only does it have that immune system, immune function in the bones, but everywhere else that the immune system, that the white blood cells go and they respond to things that are happening in different areas of the body. So this is the diagnosis. So if you have somebody that has immune dysfunction, well, what is then the treatment? What is the solution to the immune dysfunction? The solution is not to isolate yourself from others. It's not to put barriers between you and others. It's not, right? It's not to do all of those things. The solution to immune dysfunction is given to us in the word of God. And it's there showing us what everything is that causes healthy bones. Psalm 34, 17 to 20 says the righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and he saves such as are of a, are of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. There's a lot of bad things that happen to the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one, is broken. So this is an evidence of healthy bones, i.e. a healthy immune system. And where does that come from? It comes from those who go to God as their source. They cry to who? They cry to the Lord. And they go to God as their source of everything that they need. And the Lord, they know the Lord hears them. And they trust that the Lord hears them. And they know and they trust that the Lord is near to them. They are not alone. They have not been forsaken. God is right there with them. And God is their savior. He will save them out of these troubles. There are troubles, but the Lord will save me out of them. It's one who has that kind of trust in God, who goes to God as his source, that then has <laughs> all his bones. He has all his immune function because that is the basis of a proper immune function and a proper immune system. Psalm 51, verses 7 through 12. David's prayer after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and his, the little baby born to Bathsheba and David died. He prayed, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. So he might have been, and he was, we might have been dirty and sin before, but we can go to God and we can ask him to cleanse us. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Broken bones, bad immune system. Bones rejoicing, immune system healing. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 
Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous or free spirit. So when we come to God, yes, we've had sin. Yes, we've made mistakes. Yes, we've fallen on our face again and again. But when we come to God and we ask for his forgiveness, he forgives us. He blots out our sins. When we ask for a new heart, he gives us a new heart, a clean heart, and he restores us to salvation, the joy of knowing that we are right with God. And that has a huge impact upon immune function so that it can function properly. The Bible is telling us where proper immune function comes from. This is Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 1 through 8. Proverbs 3, 1 through 8, says, My son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. Right? So not forgetting God's law, but, keep, but, but keeping his commandments. What happens when you remember his law and you keep it? Length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Oh, I like that. Anybody like to live a long time and to have healthy life while you live? And to be at peace? Yeah, we all want that. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. So here's somebody that's holding on to mercy, that's holding on to truth. Not so much, yes, from the standpoint of taking mercy and taking truth from God, but really the implication here is somebody who is giving mercy to others, somebody who is giving truth to others. Bind them about your neck, write them upon the table of your heart, so that you find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. Trust in the Lord with part of your heart, no, with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. So somebody who is trusting in the Lord with all their heart, they're asking the Lord, what would you have me to do? They're remembering his law and keeping his commandments. They are holding on to mercy and truth and giving it to others. What happens? They fear the Lord and they depart from evil. The result of that is health to your navel or your belly and marrow or fatness or health to your bones. So trusting in the Lord acknowledging him in everything in your life, fearing the Lord, departing from evil, knowing his law and keeping his law. It is health to your immune system and it brings proper function. We're told the light of the eye, Proverbs 15, 30, rejoices the heart and a good report make the bones fat. So having a good report is something as well, having good news, good things that come that you're thinking about and that you believe. And when you hear that good news, oh, you have a good feeling too. And it causes proper function to happen in your immune system as well. Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the, the bones. Now, we would be tempted to believe that this is hearing pleasant words. Now, it's true from the Lord, we hear pleasant words. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness I have drawn. He said, I, I have, I have, uh, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will, if you confess your sins, I will, I am faithful and just will forgive you from, of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yes, those pleasant words that we receive from God is health to the, to the bones. But it's not just that. It's when we speak pleasant words to others because we have pleasantness in us. Because we are pleasant, because we have come and taken pleasantness from God, we can then give pleasant words to others. And that is health to the bones. Again, Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart, a cheerful heart does good like a medicine. Now, you don't have to be merry because everything is going well. You can, be cheer you can choose to be cheerful because that's what you're like regardless of what's going on around you. You don't have to have good things going on around you in order to be cheerful. 
but you do have to have a good source that himself is cheerful. And you take that cheerfulness from him, and now you have the cheerfulness and you have a merry heart. And that is good like medicine for broken bones, for a bad immune system. All right, let me wrap up with Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. This is what we really need to understand. This as medical providers, as medical missionaries, as uh, individuals seeking to cooperate with God in helping individuals. We need to understand Isaiah 58. It's crucial. He says, is this, is not this the fast that I have chosen? What does God want us to do? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. That you break every yoke, that you deal your bread to the hungry, and that you bring the poor that are cast out that don't have a home into your house. That when you see the naked, you cover them, and that you do not hide yourself from friends and family and others around you. What happens when you do these things? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily. This is a condition for health. What's the condition for health? The condition for health is letting others go free undoing the burdens, letting the oppressed go free, breaking the yoke, feeding the hungry, bringing the poor into your home, covering the naked, right? And making yourself available to others. That brings health. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be their, your reward. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You know he answers you because he's faithful. And he will say, here I am. You know he's there because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you will take away from the midst of you the yoke. So stop putting burdens on others. Stop pointing your finger and blaming others. Stop speaking things that just don't mean anything. If you draw out your soul to the hungry and, to, and satisfy the afflicted soul, supply what they need. Then your light shall rise in obscurity in the darkness as the noonday, and the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul. Oh, when you're involved in, in helping others and relieving their, their suffering and, and setting them free, oh, there's, there's a satisfaction in the soul that nothing else could pay for. Nothing else could bring that about. What happens then? It will make your bones fat. It will cause your immune system to function just like it's supposed to. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Friends, Isaiah 58 is the core text, the core thing that we need as medical providers, as medical missionaries, to understand what our responsibility is as medical missionaries in these last days. It is this right here. Study Isaiah 58. Study what is there. And when we begin to do these things because we come and connect with God, then it will have a powerful effect on our body and a powerful effect on healing. One last quote from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6. It says, I cannot too strongly urge all our church members, all who are true missionaries, all who believe the third angel's message, all who turn away their feet from the Sabbath, to consider the message of the 58th chapter of Isaiah. The work of beneficence enjoined in this chapter is the work that God requires his people to do at this time. At this time, it is a work of his own appointment. The nearer we approach the end, the more urgent this work becomes. So friends, here we are. This is what the Bible shows us about immune function. There is much that we can learn, much that we should learn from God, from his word, about how we function 
and how we need to go about in the process of restoring function again. And I pray that we might learn to study that word, that we might be good stewards of God's word, that we might understand what he has for us so that we can be better, wiser healthcare professionals taking care of others.